Perhaps this is why you don't see the path of leaves artfully placed on the ground. Perhaps you simply aren't accustomed to looking for the work of human hands. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we have the Wolf of Derevinia. Uh, possibly saying that wrong, but uh, it's a choose your own adventure interactive story 2D game. Uh, it's going to be a lot of me reading, to be honest, because it's, yeah. We're going to be choosing our own adventure. So, um, yeah, it'll be a little different than my usual stuff. So if you want to continue to see more things like this or even uh, for me to get the full game, please let me know. Uh, so, yeah, if y'all enjoy the video, give it a like and make sure you subscribe so we can keep, you know, keep it up on the channel. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy. The Wolf of Duravina. Vina? Duravina? Duravina. Chapter 1. In from the Cold. Movement in the corner of your eye. A flash of grizzled gray half concealed by the thorny underbush. You look up from the path. Nothing it might... It might have been the wind, might have been a startled pheasant, but you've learned to trust your instincts. And the prickling at the back of your neck says, Wolf, are we going to follow the beast into the woods? Examine the path, head down the path to the west, head up the path to the east. I'm all for somebody who trusts their gut. So, let's examine the path. Wheel ruts, shallow but still distinguishable. A half-rotten plank fallen from some wagon long ago. A lost glo glove, glove, traces of humanity. How strange that you once lived among these things. I would mm, follow the beast into the woods, head down the path to the east or west. Let's. We're gonna pick the east because I'm from the east coast. At a bend in the path, you catch a hint of a rusted iron scent on the air. Blood was spilled ahead, and recently. We're going to head east toward the scent of blood, or head west following the path? Let's avoid the blood. Let's head west. Faint wheel ruts mark a path running east to west. Let's continue down the path to the west. The trees thin here. A vague unease gnaws at the back of your mind as you walk. This path, a village, must be near. The thought of them going around the ordinary task of early autumn, milking cows, mowing, mowing hay, kneading bread, kills you with reluctance. You aren't sure if you're ready to face humanity. Head east instead. Head into the woods in search of the beast. We're gonna head into the woods. Your hand on the hilt of your sword, you slip into the bushes. Your bass shoes noiseless on the moss. You reach for the clearing where you spotted no movement. Nothing. Not so much as a squirrel. Examine the clearing. You kneel and look over the leaf litter with the eye of long experience. Not a footprint. Not a tuft of hair. But wait. Here on the elder sapling, some snap twitch. Something has been that way. Let's follow. You creep through the forest, alert for any hint of a beast on the prowl. Perhaps this is why you don't see the path of leaves artfully placed on the ground. Perhaps you simply aren't accustomed to looking for the work of human hands. You jump back as the trap springs and it doesn't catch your foot, but its jaws snap onto the side of your calf, biting deep through the skins you wear. Pain sp spangles your vision with spots of light. You stagger to one knee and grab your leg. Your hands immediately slick with blood examine the wound bandage the wound let's examine you gingerly pull away the torn edges of your clothes the trap is sliced through muscle and tendon you glimpse a hint of white beneath a glush of blood bandage you root through your rug sack for some old strips of cloth the long faded last remnants of a bogatars bogatars tunic you wrap the nearly tourniquet tight around your leg and press down with both hands, biting your lip. The cloth is instantly saturated and the bleeding shows nice, no sign of slowing. There's nothing for it. You're going to need real medical attention. Head to the village for help. 
You're not sure how you wish to re-enter society, but it wasn't like this. Stagger needs the trees for support, a trail of bloody footprints marking your path. The village looms ahead. The church's onion dome rising above the Ibiza's, Ibiza's <laughs> carved ridge poles. You can hear low voices, see a couple of people in the village square drawing water from the well. They haven't caught sight of you yet. When people look at you, they usually assume you are... We're going to say a man, because I think this is trying to gather our sects. At least that was what they saw once when you were a proper Bodutar. How they react to a grizzled creature dressed in skins, well, you'll soon find out. You gear yourself up for the looks, the questions. Stride in boldly or creep in quietly? We're not stride in. It's just what we do. It's difficult to look confident when you're staggering to keep weight off your lacerated leg, drawing closer to swooning with every step. But you do your best. You want to show weakness before these people? Chin up. Meet their eyes. You try to remember the labyrinth of rules that people use among themselves. You feel as one. You feel as out of place among these villagers as you would before the. The Naz and all his retin, retinue. The people by the well pause. The woman sitting down her bucket. You feel their gaze traversing your layers of furs, your long tangled hair. Silence settles over the village. Faces appear in doorways. No one speaks. That's for help. You ask, does this village have a doctor? No doctor here, says the man. But the young woman, she's more of a girl, really adds, but Mila speaks the plant talk. Tastes the death heat on you. Has it out like that. Come on, Broda, be a pillar. The man's nose wrinkles as though you smell offends him, which it probably does, but he slings your arm over his shoulder. The two of them help you to a building with red gavels and a lantern hanging over the door. Womb-like warmth and dimness swallow you. Bundles of herbs aim from the roof beams and a masonry stove dominates the wall. The air is close within the lingering smell of bodies. A woman in an apron is bent over the stove. Honestly, Brazanov, it's not even noon, she says. Before she turns and sees you, she's middle-aged with a kind but careworn face. Open hair slipping from under her cap. Oh. The man and nun woman helps you onto the rough hoon wooden bench. Your vision swims through hazy tartness as all your weakness catches up to you at once. The woman in the apron sizes up the situation at a glance. She shoes the other two out of the inn. We'll go on. You'll only be in the way. She peels away the dirty furs and bandages crusted to your leg with dried blood and clits her tongue at the sight of the ragged wound. What happened? A trap or just an accident? Trap. A trap! Stupid of me. I should have seen it. The woman sighs and shakes her head. That's Brezinov. I've always, I'm always telling him that he sets his traps too close to the village. You're lucky it isn't worse. No broken bones at least, but it'll need stitches. As she does the fetch a needle and thread, she says, I'm Mila, by the way. Do you have a name? What name do you give? Sasa? Dragomir? Yekaterina? Or it doesn't matter. Let's go with Dragomir. That just sounds cool. Well, Dragomir, I imagine this will be nothing compared to the things you've been through, but some liquid fortitude still won't go amiss. She pours you a wooden cup of meta Metavolka. It's bitter and astringent on your tongue, the taste of the eve of the bottle. Battle. Groggy and half-conscious from lost blood, you hardly feel as Mila stitches you and wraps your leg with poultices. When she's finished, she helps you onto the top of the stove, which is covered in rugs and warm as horse's flank. You vaguely feel her unbuckling something from your side. Your sword. Let her take it. Or don't let her take it. She takes your sword. For the first time in years, you are defenseless. You curl up in the pile of rugs and fall asleep as weak as a child. You awaken to a rich aroma of stewing meat. Mila is at the table below, mincing herbs and humming to herself. Mila looks up. You must be famished. I'll take you a few days to recover your strength. You helped me, why? I can't pay you. I climb down from the stove. Climb down from the stove. You climb down from the stove. Mila is ladling the stew into wooden bowls. A shaggy gray tabby sits in front of the stove. What village is this? Pet the cat or something? Let's pet the cat. I do. I'm all about animals. Sorry. If you all know anything about me, this. Mm. Oh, you stretch the cat's ears, he yawns. His name is Calm, says Mila. He's utterly useless. Lump? Does he catch mice, Elise? Not a one. 
What villages does Petcom accept a bolus do? You take a seat at the table and accept the bowl she, bowl she offers you. The broth is thick and brown and steam rises off of it. It stalls your tongue, but still you drink it like a starving animal, ignoring the spoon. <laughs> Salt and herbs, you can't remember the last time someone cooked for you. Mila sits opposite you. You now realize she isn't as old as you thought. Not nearly. Looking past her work roughened hands, she can't be more than 30. Those eyes, though. <clears throat> There's nothing in those distant eyes like she's seen empires rise and fall. So where are you from, asked Mila. No for God, north. Let's go north. North. That's not very descriptive. No, it's not. You lapse into silence. She says... You've been out here on your own all this time. Yes, all alone. No, I had to do it. I am now, but I wasn't always. Yes, all alone. It's not the truth, at least not the whole truth, but the real story is something you cannot yet face, even in your own mind. Mila rests her cheek on one hand. How could you survive for so long by yourself? Now she's just getting nosy. You lock eyes with her and drink your stew in silence, pointed silence. Mealy gives you a patient smile. After a minute or so, it sinks in that you're being ridiculous, but you're damned if you'll break your silence first. Mila says, the fire in the stove is hot. I could draw you a bath. I'm taking a lot from her, and y'all not y'all just don't attack me for this. That would be lovely, actually. Mila hauls the cast iron tub out from the corner, places it inside the stove, and fills it with water. She hangs a blanket over the stove's mouth for privacy. You slip inside, it's hazy with steam and easily roomy enough for a grown man. It takes time to strip your clothes off, layer upon layer of skins and furs, basted together, tied with thongs, all plastered together with old mud and sweat. <clears throat> you slip into the tub with a sigh. The warm water is soon cloudy and brown. Parasites float to the surface, wriggling in their death throes. <laughs> no, you attempt to rate some of your worst snarls out of your hair and beard with your fingers, but it's no use. They'll probably need to be cut out. You scrub yourself, trying to get the black grime out from under your nails and in the creases of your palms. But even when your skin is clean, you can't shake the feeling that something is still clinging to you like a shadow. When you emerge, Mila isn't there. She's laid out a fresh caftan, tunic, and trousers. There's even a pair of newly woven woven fast shoes put on fresh clothes or your old clothes are fine fresh clothes we're taking it all sorry <laughs> this woman's being super generous she's been great I, we don't we gotta do it the caftan is berry red with patterns of leaves embroidered around the le leaves right around the sleeves and the lower hem it's a little too large for you there are faint stains under the arms you wonder who wore it before you <clears throat> you wonder if mila made it to herself who she spent all those hours embroidering leaves for Mila re-enters the inn a few hours later, a basket of marsh peppers on her arm. You're looking significantly more human. How are you feeling? I want to say better. Better. Your color is back anyway. She presses her hand to your forehead and no sign of fever. You are one lucky man. You finger the hem of the captain. A tear has been mended, cunningly concealed with a bird and a red embroidery thread. Did you do this? You asked. It's so elaborate. Mila chuckles. Oh, that's just a little private joke. Everything is improvised by adding a firebird. I figure if you need to repair something, you may as well make it look nicer than it did before. You have a gift, a private joke with you. Lots of silence. Let's do it. No one. Someone I knew a long time ago. You say I'm feeling stronger. I think I might get out and stretch my legs a little. If you walk with a staff, you ought to be all right around Drenva, says Mila. Just don't try anything silly unless you want to swoon again. I did not swoon. I'd be careful. She claps you on the shoulder. Good. Being injured must be a blow to your ego. <laughs> you are outfitted with a sturdy oat staff, smooth polished patches worn into by other hands. Your sword rests by the door like a sleeping guard dog. Do we take it or leave it? We're going to leave the sword. We're going to trust this village. You leave the sword resting it against the door frame, though you feel weak and helpless without it. You step blinking into a mild September mid-afternoon. You must have slept half the day away. I don't like the music. The village square, such as it is, only a patch of well-trodden mud in the center of a cluster of izbas. 
A small church stands before you. Its roof, vaults, and lofty onion dome, all built on the same weathered mossy wood. Across from it stands the inn. The staring is stopped, at least although you catch a few curious glances from the villagers think you're not looking. Broda is splitting logs beside the well. Do we talk to Broda? Uh, let's, let's see what Broda's doing, huh? He sets down his axe and pushes his hair out of his face, his lanky and handsome and a stony way, flinty eyes, aquiline nose, sharp chin. So he didn't die after all, he says. No one, it's all thanks to you. Sorry to disappoint. No one, it's all thanks to you. He snorts. Don't thank me. It's Vendana's the bleeding heart. What business of mine is it whether you live or die? <clears throat> this conversation is getting you nowhere. Yeah, no. The village square, patch of well charred uh Yeah, we already did this. Okay. He ignores you, yeah. So. Let's enter the inn. You re-enter the inn's dim closeness. Your sword rests against the door frame. Calm is asleep in the still warm stove. There's no sign of Mila. We'll pet Calm. You tickle Calm's chin. He ignores you. So we have to still look around, I think. Let's enter the church. The knob nave of the church is rich with a scent of incense. The walls are rough planks, but the entrantasis is lit and covered in lovingly rendered portraits of the saints. A priest sits on the bench by the door, pouring over a codex with ragged leather, cracked leather cover. A curly gray beard falls down his chest, and he has a kindly face with crinkles around the corners of his eyes. His cassock is well-worn, but tidy. Let's talk to the priest. When he sees you, he brightens and closes his book. Ah, you're back. My name is Father Cyril. C Cyril, what can I do for you? What does the good book have to say today? Oh, this! He looks down at the book, clasping his arms. It's not the good book, but the tale of Edward's campaign. A poem about Edward Svatslovich, the brave, and his great defeat as the river Kalela. Quite fascinating. Do you read? I never learned. Ah, then I shall teach you. I'd like that. His face brightens. Then we shall begin tomorrow. Join me and Onfram here at the Divine... The liturgy. I wish to receive Holy Communion. You've missed it, I'm afraid, says Father Zero. Come tomorrow for the Divine Liturgy. You may receive it then. Confess my sins. And Christ is ready to hear them, says Father. He vanishes behind the incantasis and emerges a few minutes later in his vestments. You really do want to confess to feel that lead impression that lifted from your chest. But when you stand before the cross, the words dry on your tongue. Father lays a hand on your shoulder. When the time is right, the words will come, he says gently. I'd just like to stay here a while, if you don't mind. Of course. Everyone is welcome to the house of God, says Father. I'll give you a few minutes by yourself. He takes his book and goes behind the entrance nexus. You are alone with God. We're going to... Stand in silence, because we're weird. Let's look around. Your eyes wander over the saints, their delicate brush strokes, and cracked yellow vanish. They record you, regard you beautifully through their large brown eyes. Their gaze convicts you, enrages you, alienates you. Convicts. You feel naked before them, their eyes cutting through you like the sharpest blade. Your life is laid bare before them, every dark shadow, every corner where you might hide. Head east. Let's head west. Uh, here in the hollow at the end of the village, the ground grows wet and spongy, and the east buzz are green with mildew. The manor stands at the top of the hill beyond. A burly, disheveled trapper sits slouched on a stump in front of the east bus, repairing a snare. The, tra the trapper is short and heavy set with a rusted red beard and thick eyebrows. He wears a fur hat and rabbit fur trims his caftan and boots. He takes a pull from a jug of Medovka and regards you ruefully. Look, I'm real sorry about your leg, he says. I can pay you for your suffering. A Martin pelt. Two Martin pelts. I don't want to be an ass. 
Let's do, we're just gonna do one. One pelt will be fine. He nods. I can have it free tomorrow. Have you seen any kind of predator out in the woods? What kind of a predator? Did he just tense up a little? A wolf. A wolf. I thought I saw one when I was coming into the village. No wolf packs around here, it says a little too quickly. But a single wolf. Perhaps. Or he wets his lip ner lips nervously. I had this sense that something was prowling around. I never got a proper look at it. But by the traces, this must have been huge. And by the way, it was stalking around the village, lying in wait. It wasn't natural for a beast. And that's what you set out to trap. The villagers should have laughed at me if... Would have laughed at me if I told them. Said it was just old brass enough drunk out of his mind again. I needed proof. He sighs. So much for that. Bit early for hitting the jug, isn't it? Leave me in peace. A man's got a right to want to be apart from himself now and again. And he takes another swig. Let's head east. Head for the manor. What's the manor? Painfully, you make your way. Oh. The manor crowns the top of the hill. Knock on the door. Visit the stable. The heavy oak door creeps open. A serf woman in a yellow kerchief dips into a little bow. You want to see Lord Gordomir? I'll show you in. <clears throat> the parlor's walls are hung with thick felt rugs in a patterns of contrasting brown and white. Lord Gordomir is sitting by the fire. Drinks Cavus. He's a man of 50... His dark beard stink state street with the gray. His hat and embroidered caftan are trimmed with ermine, f ermine for fur. A scar sweeps across his cheek and forehead, narrowly missing his eye. You must be the Bogotar everyone is talking about, he says. Dragomir, isn't it? You nod. He waves you to a chair on the other side of the fire. You sit and lay your staff across against the wall. He offers you a glass. Kavas. Yes, please. The fermented rye, flavored with raisins. It's sour and cold, the flavor of the last vanishing days of summer. He takes a sip from his own lust. Now, what may I do for you? Those are fine roads on the walls. Not Russian, are they? Turkish, says Lord Gordomir. The Palofsky bring them to trade. That surprises you. The Palofsky come from this far north. From time to time, more these past few decades, they're fine people to trade with when we're not at war. Cross paths with them, but it was far from here. They're fearsome fighters, especially in open country. Imagine you have, says Lord Gordomir. The thunder of his horseshoes rushes back into the mind, sparks flying as iron struck iron, but those memories are not his to ask for. I'm not, I'm not asking for this dude to be punished. This, no. I mean, I think that's more me than him. Like, setting traps, I should be on the lookout, I think. Just my opinion. The stable is a little more than a log lane to against the pack, back of the building, housing a couple of shaggy cart ponies. Lord Vortemir's black mare is loose in the pasture beyond, peacefully cropping daisies. Approach the mare. I was not ready for that. <laughs> you uproot a handful of wild carrots, your, your own horse's favor, and approach her slowly. Murmuring quiet reassurances, the mare flares her nostrils, but perhaps she senses that you are one who knows horses and loves them. Because she accepts the herbs and allows you to stroke her neck. Oh, She's not one of the great destriers of the Knazis, whoa, but a sturdy, small beast with feathering made for harsh winters and rocky paths. You'd weigh there, she's a pull off yours. Mm. Let's head for the pond. The pond water is dark and flat as glass. A couple of turtles blinked at you dis disinterestedly. You prod the water with your staff. Half to compose loose swirls around, releasing a foul smelling bubble. Your staff meets something hard. You pull it out of your water. It's the stroll of some small predator. A wildcat, maybe. Whatever it was, it met a hard fate. The entire back of its stroll was crushed. You wipe the grime off the stroll on a patch of moss and you slip it into your pocket. You probe through the weeds around the pond, causing the turtles to vanish under the water. You notice a hint of a trail, not very well known, leading up into the stony land north of the village. Perhaps no more than a deep path, but... 
I don't feel safe following this trail without like my sword and stuff. So I think we're not going to do that. Here the path meanders its way out of the village and into the trees which crowd it with their shaggy branches. On the north side, the land slopes down toward the wheat-choked pond. To the south, the pines and spruces melt into a stand of birch trees, which gives way to metal. meadow. The sun is getting low, warming the horizon a golden yellow. We already did the pond. Birch grove, meadow. I don't like doing a lot of this stuff now that I don't have my sword. The birch tree stands straight and thin like an army of spears. Their bone white barts peels off in paper sheets like litter the ground. There's a little boy here, armed with a stick and engaged in a heated battle. The birch bark strips go scattered in like a flock of doves beneath his blows. Talk to the boy. The boy lowers his stick and squints up at you. Hello there, what's your name? Onfem, says the boy. He's all elbows and knees, with a snub nose and two permanent teeth kitty corner in the front of his mouth. I'm a boateer. I'm winning a great battle. He whacks at another piece of birch bark. Uh, we're done talking. Let's see what the meadow has. A meadow, a stubborn redoubt against the encroaching trees. The wind ruffles the grass. A flock of lopped eared Mottled sheep graze placidly. The woman from the well is here, a shepherdless shepherdess, apparently sitting on a rock with a crook over her arm. The shepherdess is pale and frickly, her long braids fastened in two loops behind her ears. Her pale eyes never seem to be looking at anything in particular. She cocks her head. Sir, 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 sir <laughs> of wind on branches. A stranger approaches. What do you seek, Rockfall? Rockfall, what do you call me that? I wanted to thank you for helping me yesterday. Words are no sound, no smell, says the shepherdess. What are they, really? Just thoughts lost in the air. Okay. Have you seen a beast? You relate to her about the elk and the stroll in the pond. Seen? Svedana doesn't see what's right in front of her face, says the shepherdess. She clasps the lamb's face between her hands presses her forehead against his nose. But they smelled the crunch of claws on earth, heard shaggy fur in the night, they told me. The sheep told you? Not word telling, says Vina. She strips the lamb's nose and releases it. They hear and feel like I do. What kind of beast? Was it a wolf? So Dana considers wolf tastes of craggy pine and hot blood. This was suit of a winter fire. Hmm. Rockfall, why do you call me that? Why call a thing what it is? They called me Zvenna. Taste of a salamander crawling on a rock. Did they ask me? What would you call yourself? A word for a person is catching a river in your hand, she says. She nods at the sheep. They know. You know the man by the well? Brada? No. Zvenna doesn't know anything. So she says Brada. Him least. But if you're asking, would you find us under the same roof? That's so. This, 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 this English is messing with me. <laughs> You don't seem very fond of him. Makes no matter what life tastes Vana wants. No one asks that. I'm asking. She gazes up at the clouds, spindling the sky. Blurring where the sheep-covered field ends. Me? I want to lick the night air and smell the sun warmth. Lie in the grass and hear the tree's heartbeats. I'm done talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's head back to the village. Let's head into the village. I'm gonna try to go back. It's, let's see if Mila's back. Ah, yeah, okay. Mila's back, she's washing her face in a wooden basin. Her kerchief is off. Her hair is a loose short braid over one shoulder. Not much in our little village to interest you, I imagine, she says. It's quiet, I like that. The people to seem all right, I don't need to be entertained. It's quiet, I like that. Seen enough excitement for one lifetime, have you? Before you can reply. The door creaks and lets in a sudden burst of crimson sunset. Savannah sits, stands bent over in the doorway, clutching her side with one hand. Out there, she grasps, smelling the stream on in the air, a rabbit in a snare. A swallow darts from the cleft in the rocks. I felt the slice of teeth with my own eyes. Mila ushers her to the bench and places an arm around her. Savannah, slow down. Please just speak plainly. 
<clears throat> Black of rent paper, heartbeat of a dying tree, Svenna says. She's almost babbling. Mila looks at you helplessly. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea, but obviously something's wrong. Just where did it happen? Whatever it was, asked Mila. Svenna points vaguely towards the end of town where the trees eat the izbas. I'll fetch Lord, says Mila, already halfway out the door. Meet us there. We're grabbing the sword. Ah, uh -uh. you buckled the belt around your waist, reassured that you've prepared to face whatever's out there. Svenna lulls on the beach, rocking back and forth. Her eyes are out of focus. Swallow darts in the cleft, she repeats. Swallow darts across the sky. Will you be all right here, you ask? But she only keeps repeating those words. Let's leave. You shout out as fast as you can with your bad leg, but the time you reach by the end, all the villagers are there gather around a form lined half concealed by a copse of trees. A couple of lanterns make firefly bright spots in the dust. The murmur of low, anxious voices cut through the group. Hang back and listen. A dozen people are talking at once, their voices low as though speaking in church. He was fine an hour ago. Torn with such strength, poor Svenna pushed to the group. You shoulder your way to the front of the group, red, so much red that it overwhelms your vision. It's a long moment before you can piece together the rest of the scene. Brodo lies with his neck twisted back at an unnatural angle, his axe clutched, clutched in one stiff hand. His body is torn up open in so many places that it seems to be more wounds than flesh. <clears throat> the villagers are clustered together. Mila and Lord, Alfum and Father are all shift onto you. The stranger in the mist or past the soaked in blood. Lord lays a heavy, gloved hand on your shoulder. I believe you, and I need to talk. In the woods beyond, at the edge of your vision, you think you can see something stir. What? Thank you for playing the Wolf Dravena Chapter 1. Well, all right. I hope y'all enjoyed my reading. Uh, I'm sorry if it seemed a bit off in here or there. If you didn't enjoy it, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so The Wolf of the, Ren the Rena is coming spring of 2023. I uh, hope y'all enjoy this video. Look kind of a little different thing for the channel. Uh, but yeah, if you want to see more stuff like this, make sure you write it down in the comments. Uh, give it a like, all that good shit. Uh, and yeah, make sure you subscribe. Keep seeing these games. Thank y'all so much, and I'll see you on the next one.